Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Electronic Music Collective online workshops. My name is Josh Andrus. I'm the Director of Curriculum and Instruction at Electronic Music Collective and the Collective School of Music. We are very excited to bring you our first FL Studio workshop with the one and only Frank Jab C. We are also super excited to announce that we will now be conducting FL Studio online private lessons. If interested, contact admissions at electronicmusiccollective.com. All right, Frank, let's take it from here. Hello, everyone. My name is Frank Javsi, and uh, for those of you who don't know me, I made this song. The fine people over at Electronic Music Collective uh, have given me this opportunity to show you guys my FL Studio projects in this FL Studio workshop. So uh, let's get started on here. So as you can see, I color organize my tracks. So you could easily see all of the different audio that I'm being used. I also uh, put in these little uh, time markers so you can see where the intro, verse, chorus, breakdown, where everything is, and uh, it sits in the project. So let's start with the with the intro. So let's just highlight this this uh, beginning part and we can uh, go through that step by step. So for this one, I use um, I use these two bells, a piano, some guitar and bass. Um, there's no vocals yet. So it sounds a little something like this. So let's listen to the bells first. I think the bells are very interesting. And if you see this like glowy thing right here, this is normally how I visualize music. It's called a spectrograph and it allows you to see where the pitches of uh, each note is. So if you just listen to the bells, you'll hear. So I'm able to see where they're uh, where they sit in the mix and uh, for this track in particular I did a lot of hard panning so I selected this audio and you'll see the little audio box right here it's actually pitched up uh, by two cents because originally I wrote the song two keys lower and as time went on I, I pitched it up um, and this is on the right side so if you listen to it it should come out of your right ear and this one is on the left side so when you listen to it you hear it on the left side. So when you mix them together, I wanted to create like the stereo pan effect. These are two different takes uh, played. Instead of using MIDI, what I did was I I just played it into the audio editor so I could uh, just have it more sound more organic. So uh, now let's listen to the piano. And these are just simple chords being strummed uh, by hand. And I did the same effect to uh, the piano. Um, this one I panned 50% to the right. If you can't see uh, these notes, there's this little area up here by the file edit add where you can see a uh, little like, um, I don't know, just parameters. And I like looking at that stuff to see uh, how strong it is. So this is 50% right. It's uh, at negative 5.2 dB loud. And um, this one is, of course, uh, left 50%. So it's left 50, left right. And it comes together in your head as like a full, like it's like a bigger sound. So now let's listen to the guitars I have in here. Let's uh let's just listen to the guitars on their own cuz that this is I think what started the whole track for me. It's just a, a simple little guitar loop. Um very simple chords. This one's hard pan 75% to the right, hard pan 75% to the left, negative uh, 12 decibels of uh, volume level. And then when you put it together it just sounds more open. And then for the bass, it's like normal practice for a bass to be center panned. So as you can see, the bass here is negative 18 decibels. It's really quiet because I didn't want it to be too powerful because, you know, bass frequencies are really powerful. Pan center. And uh, what I did for this, if you can see, is like some of the notes I didn't hit right. So like, let me show you. I'll drag uh, a bass line. I'll drag the bass line to this guitar track and just solo it. Um, if you can see... I actually messed up on the timing so what I did was I used this little scissor tool and I click none and then I get as close as humanly possible and I just snip and then after you snip you could uh, drag it you could quantize it yourself and you could do it for the rest of them so that's what I did for these bass lines is I, I just snipped and quantized it uh, by myself oh and 
for those of you who don't know, if you use this little snap to grid, that's how you're able to snap to the playlist. This is like where you arrange all your music and everything. Um, so normally I, I turn it on none if I want to do like micro adjustments so I could get timing right. And uh, when you put it all together, you get this sound. All right, so uh, let's go to the verse now. Uh, the verse is very simple. I don't know if I need to say this, but there is some uh, some bad words in the verse to make it edgy. So um, if you're sensitive to that sort of stuff, I I'm sorry. Uh, but let let's check out the drums first. Let's uh, let's go into the drums and see what the drums are doing. It's very simple. Like this is just a rock beat. Like if you have like an old keyboard or something, this is normally like what you would hear in like a preset, like a, a just a drum loop. So if you want to check out what I used, let's go to this little thing called uh, the channel rack. And this is basically where you put all your synthesizers and stuff. Um, this is just a quick little drum pattern. It's the only pattern I used MIDI wise in the track. So we have a bass kick. Um, let me just solo it so you could hear it. It's actually a Lin drum machine kick. The Lin drum machine is like a very classic uh, drum machine that Prince used. A lot of people in the 80s used it. Um, if you actually open up the piano roll, right click and uh, piano roll, you can see there's actually some dynamics going on. So the first kick I try to make a little bit louder than the other kick so it stands out in the mix as one. That's a trick I learned from James Brown. He's like an old like R&B dude who is like the one super important when it comes to rock and roll music. And then the, the snare is just a very, it's actually a kind of off. If you see in the sample, there's like a little space between it. It's what gives it like this slight drag to it. Okay, so Every now night. let's hear what the bells are doing in this one. So it's basically like the same thing, but instead of uh, playing a melody, I'm just going up. And like what that does is it creates like this little rise. And I, I really like that in this song, it like pushes upwards. Um, let's hear the piano. It's the same piano that I use in the beginning. The chords are still the same. It's just me playing it. I really like this wall of sound. It gives it like a vintage flavor to it. And then here's the guitar. However, I did add more guitar to it. So I layered guitar parts, and I think these are hard pan left and hard pan right, but that's actually an, an electric guitar, I believe. Is it? Yeah, so it's a layered clean electric guitar with a nylon guitar. So if you listen to like the before and after, there's a dynamic because there's more guitars at it. So this is before, right before the drop. It's just spacey and now it's thicker because I added more guitars. There's more harmonics. If you see in this uh, like glowy thing right here, you can see that there's less harmonics, less sound, and then ampli like it amplifies the sound, makes it thicker, uh, crunchier, I would say. And then this bass line, I'm, I'm really proud of this bass line, I like this bass line. And it's funny, this little riff right here, the do 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 do, I think I recorded that separately. Yeah, because I, I would always mess up right here and um, I, I couldn't get it right. So what I did was uh, I got rid of this version because I didn't like the way it sounded and I just created my own. I think I could even show you this. So like, this is how originally the bass line was gonna sound. Let me solo it so you could hear it better. Yeah, see, it just went da 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 da. And um, I guess I thought it was boring. So what I wanted to do was add some flourish, some bass flourish, so. Yeah, and that's easy. You just have to like snip the little parts. Um, okay, the next part is my vocals and my vocals, I'm very, I know it says hand orchestral too. Like, I don't know, FL Studio gives you like, if you edit like a an audio and then you rename it, it's, it's it usually stays the same name. And like when I record, I get super lazy. Like I, I'm not, you should have seen the project beforehand. The project will get really crazy. I had to organize this so I could show you guys, but like, I don't know, you just kind of get used to, to it and sort of stuff. Um, normally what I do is I have one center vocal, so this is at negative six decibels, it's right in the center. And then I have this one at negative six and it's panned 50% to the right. Um, this one's 50% to the left and when you put it together it creates like this, um, I don't know, I just like this thick sound that's like all around you. 
I'm a vampire, I'll stay up every night. So when you mix it all together, you get something like this. I'm a vampire, I'll stay up every night. I'm a warrior, I'll never lose the fight. Okay, so now let me show you one of my favorite little tricks. I do this in electronic music all the time, but it's the it's the cymbal crash. It really brings emphasis and pushes like it's like a like the ocean. It pushes and moves the track forward. So you could hear this right here. And then it just fades away. But when you put it in the whole track together, it sounds it sounds quite epic. <laughs> Okay. I also do this fake out right here where like uh, it, it only hits one kick and it's like boom. So what that does is like it really draws the ear like you know in electronic music right before the drop the build up and they'll have like the, the, the slow fade so that the dynamics sound even stronger. Um, okay so for the next part the chorus. Uh, I actually added more drums so if, if you see there's a pattern one and a pattern two. Um, some what I've noticed in FL Studio is if you tr like layer midis over each other, sometimes it doubles the sound. So here's just one sound, the regular drum beat, and then I added this other drum beat to it, and now it's twice as loud. So like before the drums were quiet, roll half as loud, and then adding it again gives it twice. So for the chorus, I need to make sure that stands out. Let's see what the bells are doing. Thing, I think I added like a bunch of bells to this one. Let me uh, just mute this. You know what? This isn't a bell. I learned in this live stream right here that uh, this is actually a synth bass. Okay, let, let's pretend that doesn't exist. But the bells are going up and uh, I'll, I'll showcase this part when I get to the bass. Um, and then the, the piano chords, I actually did like something different. I made them major to minor because this song's actually really influenced by Kate Bush's Babushka song and um, I was learning how to play that on piano and guitar and the verses are all minor but when it turns into the chorus it turns major which is like some music theory stuff so it makes it sound happier it starts off sad and gets happy it kind of sounds like uh, for some reason it reminds me of Dead Mouse. but if you listen to these chords over here they're sad like the, the chords are, are in uh, the minor key, so it sounds more desperate, more like longing. But then when it hits the chorus, it's happy. And it's just like very subtle key uh, changes to give that like oomph. Okay, the organ is my favorite part. So my favorite video game of all time is called Chrono Trigger, and the music in that game is what like influenced all of my art to this point. So the organ really pushes like, I don't know, just listen to those. So it's pushing up, and I like that. It's actually a choir. I called it an organ because it's easier to relate that way. And then the guitars, they're just intense. Like, I just, instead of uh, recording four guitars, like I did last time, I did four, eight. I did eight whole guitars. So let's see how the guitars sound on their own in the chorus. And it's, I actually did the, the major minor change with the piano and the... The guitar so like the the original verse chorus is sad and then when it comes to the chorus chorus it's happy okay now let's listen to what the bass is doing so for this bass i just kind of mimic the guitar pattern actually no i didn't i lied don't pay attention to me <laughs> I actually love this. This is like one of my favorite bass lines I've ever recorded. Yeah, I did it like perfect in one take and just looped it. Like it's it's weird when I record, like I'll just loop the track over and over. And this is like probably like four or five loops in. I just like did it perfectly. I'm like, that's the one. And I knew it was right. Um, however, I did layer it with these bells, but they're actually, it's actually a bass synth to give it more like thickness. They could, you could hardly even tell it's in there because they're like layered on top of each other. It's actually like a lower synth bass. And then I added my bass over it. Okay, now let's go to uh, my chorus, which I do the same 
uh, effect I do on the verse, uh, middle, and then two on the left and right. I love it and you, it's something that you do. Okay, so I'll talk about the effects and all that other stuff later. But first, a word from our sponsor. Uh, Streamlabs is recording. Thank you, Streamlabs. Shouts out to Streamlabs. You're recording me. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I just, I was really nervous because, like, if it wasn't, whoa. All right. Um, let's do the harmonies. So the harmonies were done by Marion is Magical, who I collaborate with a lot. If uh, you're familiar with my, uh, my discography, and um, it was actually funny. Like, I showed her the track, and she was like can I throw in harmonies? And I was like, yeah. So what what she did was she did two harmonies. So this one's negative 12 uh, decibels, which is like, if we talk about decibels, negative six is like halfway. And then negative 12 is like a quarter way. So if you put two quarter ways, you get a half. It's like filling up a cup. Um, so I hard pan this one left, hard pan that one right. And then there's some even higher ones. Here, l l l let's just see how it sounds. Also, I, I have an automation clip for... Uh, the vocals because there was a part where I I, I kind of scream and it hurt my ears so like when I when that came up I created like an automation clip that get rid of like the hurty sound the hurty feeling so this is Marion's vocals that's her first one and then here's her second one so as you can see one's higher than the other one so it creates like this chord effect so when you listen to it together it sounds that you do that makes it feel so good I love and you and with the spectrograph I love looking at it because I get to find where the pockets are without really having I mean you could do it in your ears like I mean is this is something I've been doing forever I love and you. so you see there's like some pockets right here and I was like okay then her 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 harmonies would fit in perfectly in those pockets I love it. Yeah, so now when we put it all together, it sounds like this. Alright, now let's go to the break. The break is one of my favorite parts because it really gives your ears room to breathe. With dynamics, you gotta have some highs and lows, so this is a low part. We have the cymbal come in. So for this one, I actually uh, interpolated, which is the right word, I believe, um, one of my favorite songs by The Cure called uh, Love Song. So this song is kind of about a love song about hating someone, I guess. So I thought it'd be like pretty interesting to uh, incorporate their little bass line riff with a guitar riff. And then I think there's a bass line that just mimics it. Because like when you make music, sometimes if rhythms get too out of whack, like you have two opposing rhythms, it'll really confuse the listener. So sometimes what I do is I just layer rhythms on each other. Okay, now let's go to the next part. I added harmonies to create, uh, you know, like, I guess dynamics. So the, the first verse and second verse are exactly the same, except for these harmonies right here. And these are negative 12 dB, hard pan left, hard pan right, and one in the center. So it sounds like, let me just play the vocals. So when you mix it all together, it's six vocals layered in such a way like a cake. It's like a pretty little cake that you eat and then you get all the flavors. I'm a vampire, I'll stay up every night. So yeah, a harmony creates like chords and your voice so I, I just really like that and everything is the same here there's no difference and then the chorus is exactly the same as last time don't tell anyone um, I think I might have added more crash symbols nope it's still exactly the same um, even all the way up to this part the only time it changes is when it gets to this part right here is where I kick off a guitar solo um, it sounds like this. I actually layered two guitar. It's the same guitar solo, just one's pitched up high and one's pitched down low to create like an octave effect. If you have a guitar pedal, like effect pedal, it'd be called like an octaver, and it sounds like this. Okay. 
So that's the high one, it's all squealy. And then the low one is lower. And then when you mix it together, you have like this. So yeah, then you mix it all together. My processor might explode for this, uh, so bear with me. end with the break again and uh yeah that song's over so yeah don't forget to stream i love hating you um now i want to show you some other stuff uh, i want to show you my mixer which i should have color coordinated um but you know this is live and if i go like this hopefully it'll be color coordinated all right, so we're back. Um, I just labeled these kick, kick, snare, hat, drum, crash, vocal, guitar, guitar, bell, chords, bass, strings, so that you can see it visually and you can see how I mixed it all together and put it all in the mix. So when I play uh, the loudest part of the song, which is the chorus, you can see all of them light up in the, in the mixer. So now let's listen to the drums. I have this thing called like a, a bus where I put all the drums onto one uh, mixer channel so they all glue together and it goes to the master. So if you see these tracks right here, they're all going over here. So let's get rid of the, the hat and the snare and you can see the drums. There's actually two drums layered. You have the regular drum plus a thicker drum to give it some oomph. And um, these drums are, are really... I don't know, really sharp. I have a limiter on it, so you can see how high it goes, and you can see it actually hits the ceiling, which is uh, zero decibels, and when it hits the ceiling, that's the loudest it could go. So on this one, I have Maximus, and uh, you can see that it's it's banging at around, like, almost uh, zero decibels, so it's hitting an entire wave, uh, not wave, uh, decibel spectrum. So then I have the snare in, so it has, like, a little drag time snare. This one, if you could see right here, is it's basically going around negative nine decibels to give it kind of not like a, a hard thonk, but just soft enough. And then I have this uh, little hat. Well, it's not it's not like a hat. It's more like a shaker. It's a really light shaker that's around the same uh, decibels as the snare almost. And when you mix it all together, I put this uh, compressor on it. It's the Waves R Comp, which is like a, it's a proprietary... Uh, not proprietary it's, it's not fl studio it's its own thing but this one is really thick so i just compressed it super low so that there's some bop in there and this is outputting at negative 0.2 decibels so it's the loudest part of the song it's the drums i really wanted the drums to hit so now let's go over to vocals Yeah, so these drum, um, these vocals are around negative six decibels, and I have so many things on them. So let's open it up and see what is running. So the first thing I have uh, on the vocals is this thing called, uh, or is it R E Q, which is just a simple E Q. And I lowered all the, I got rid of all the the bass, lowered the mids a little bit, and brought up the highs. So when you hear it together, it sounds like this. I love it and you. Because the mic that I'm using right now is an SM7B. It's very uh, bassy, so that's how you could hear my voice over it. So I just cut out the low end to uh, bring out the, the bass in the in overall track. And now using R comp, I have the threshold set at negative 12, have it compressing at a four times ratio, and the output is around negative six uh, decibels, which is half the like uh, decibel frequency range or spectrum or power range. And then I put a de over it. I'm using R de which basically gets rid of the harsh semblance. Like when I say tss, tss, all that stuff gets uh, cut away. So you could see right here. I love it and you. It's something that you do. So you see when I say something, it, it bounces down. That has a threshold of negative 42 at uh, the 6,000 frequency because that's around the, the like frequencies that hurt. I have this fruity... Uh, parameter that actually lowers more of the 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 semblance band or like the the weird harshness so specifically when the chorus hits i have an automation clip to turn it off and on in the mix and if you open up the automation you can see that right before it starts it's off and then when the chorus starts it turns on so there's less and like burny stuff for your ears 
and then I have this isotope DDL dynamic delay, which is uh, what's giving it the like I guess like the dreamy dreamy effect, so you could hear it. So as you see, it's it's um it's kind of pulsing. It's it's in sync to one fourth. Um, I have a feedback of fifty percent, uh, dryness a hundred, wet fifty. So it's like, it's it's kind of like the wetness is only fifty percent of it, and it trails off the feedback's fifty, and it's like a uh, a quarter note. So it has like this really soft kind of uh echo. Yeah, it, it's really soft. Okay, so next, let's see what the guitar is doing. Now for the EQ of the guitar, what I did was I lowered the hurdy part, which is about like the 4000 hertz, so that's the part that hurts your ears, but I brought out the super high part of the guitar really loud because I really wanted to kind of have like a shaker sound so it matches the shaker. So you could really hear the chick 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 in like the guitar strumming, it sounds like a, a high percussive instrument. And then I lowered the mids. Um, down a little bit here so they don't get muddy because between like 125 hertz and 500 hertz right here is where it's like the mud zone so that's where uh, it gets muddy and then I compressed it as a threshold of negative 10 with a ratio of 4 and the output says it's at negative 11 decibel so it's kind of like a quarter of the decibel spectrum so it kind of has like a lush just middle range stuff this other guitar is a solo um, Actually, you know what, I'm going to show you guys the solo because I think that's one of my favorite parts, um, guitar solo. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually um, sending the guitar solo to the guitar and vocal mix because I feel like my vocal mix and guitar mix were like arrange nicely enough so that if I added an extra instrument and put it into those two it'll like I guess just open it more to how I wanted my vocals and guitar to sound because during like a guitar solo it's almost like a vocal break so for this guitar thing I have this waves mono this is basically how I tune instruments the guitar don't tell anyone but it's auto-tuned because um, I don't know I like auto-tuning my guitars um, the Edison is how I recorded the the guitar sample so that's me actually playing it and when I found like a good take, I put it in there. Um, I'm using Guitar Rig by, uh, who makes this? Uh, Native Instruments. And all I have is a cabinet, some reverb, some delay. And uh, I just kind of like did it by ear to see what sounded like the most rock and rollist. And then I'm compressing it, it's the same as guitar, negative 12, uh, four ratio, that puts about negative three. But it's loud and it's coming through the guitar and vocal at the same time to give it like a, I know it, it's being spread across two different mixers. Um, it's not going out directly to the master, so it just sounds like this. So yeah, it's taking up, if, if you see right here, it's taking up the frequencies of the voice too. So let's go to the bell now. The bells sound like this. So the bell's just going up. It has the same kind of threshold as the guitar, but only it's negative 24 instead of negative 12. And I put the gain all the way up, so it's like negative 15, because it's, it's very soft bells. You don't need like uh, something very harsh on the ears, because uh, high, high frequency stuff tend to hurt your ears more. Now listen to the chords. The chords, along with uh, the bells, I really didn't do a lot of work on. I just made sure they were like around negative 15 decibels each. So it kind of has like this, uh, just background, like it's padding the background of the mids. Now let's go to the bass. Um, I bought this plugin and it was called Pensado Bass and there's this guy on YouTube who does like this whole like, uh, I guess like music engineering uh, channel and I've seen his stuff and apparently like this is his preset for bass and it's like clipping so it's like low key distorted. And that's what I used on the bass. I just put that preset on there. I got rid of all the highs. I wanted it to not be so like bright and it's just like straight up in the mud area. I really wanted the mud area to be chunky with this bass. Um, and then after that, I have this uh, compressor where it's just squishing it down. It's threshold negative six, four ratio. The output's about negative three. 
and um, one of the things I had to do was I actually had to lower the whole mix down because it was too loud so I lowered it down by negative six when it's going to the mixer so the the bass wasn't too overpowering and now here's the the choir sound so as you can see I got rid of some of the frequencies that kind of burn your ears uh, some frequencies where my vocals sit so that they wouldn't be competing too much and then this one is also compressed negative four uh, thresholds negative 27 with a gain of six gives you about negative 19 18 uh, decibels so it's actually to add to the bells like the wall of sound that comes from that so yeah, then when you mix it all together, um, it's going to the master. And for my master channel, I just have it really simple. I have this uh, Waves uh, L1 Ultra Maximizer. Um, quantize is set at, I guess, zero. The other ring's at zero. I have shaping at Ultra. Um, I wanted it to sound analog, so I have it set to analog. The out ceiling I have at negative 0.1, so there's just a tiny bit of headroom. Uh, when the track goes out so that it wouldn't peak or be too powerful and then my threshold is negative six which I chose because that's where the vocals sit and um, the vocals peak at around negative six and what I wanted was the vocals to stand out and the drums to kind of push down everything else so there's more of a pumping motion in the track so when you hear that when the drums come in it pumps the whole track so you'll see it right here So when it hits the threshold, it's like fighting down. So it creates like this pumping motion. Um, so yeah, that's how I uh, mixed and mastered my song, I Love Hating You. So I hope this was informative. Um, if you have any questions for me, just uh, let me know. Namaste. Hello everyone, it looks like we have some more time. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you my internet sensation viral meme music song, reverbedfart.flp um, for you guys. I'm gonna show you how I turned one sound sample into an entire song. Everything you see here is just one sound. And um, what is that sound you may be asking? Let's see if I can pull it up right here. These are all just like my, my test sounds. Where the heck is it? Is this it? Here it is. This is the sound I used. So I using that sound, um, I created an entire track. Let's see what this one sounds like. So that's like the, the first smallest waveform from zero point crossing to create a synth sound out of it. Um, so yeah, let's listen to the track first and then I'll show you what I did specifically. Yeah, that's enough of that I um, I'm really proud of the song because it was actually an experiment to see if, if this was even possible so let's go to the first pattern I created um, which I believe is this is the first thing that I made in the song 
It was just like some weird little like riff. So this is where the song originally started. And it was just like with this fart. Um, but then it, it's crazy. I think I did the bass first. I, I just made this bass line, which is a, an interesting thing about FL Studio is if you select this button right here, or it says uh, typing keyboard to piano keyboard, uh, you could turn your keyboard into like a, you could just play it like, and if you know like some music theory, you could uh, get away with just playing your keyboard like a regular piano. So what I came up with was with this uh, little riff in E minor. And I don't think it, it even made it all the way through. I think I changed it like several times. Oh, this one is my favorite. So let me show you. Sorry. I should really turn my phone on silent when I'm in class. Um, but this is just the first very small section of the fart sound zoomed in at its zero point crossing to create like this weird tone. So when you when you click this crossfade button, like if you turn it off, all you hear is a, is a pop. You hear like this weird pop. But if you move the crossfade up a little bit, you hear a tone when you when you hit it. So um, this part right here, I, I, my favorite part I did was this little uh, slide portamento thing. So what it is, is it's an octave slide. So on, I think the fourth beat, it goes like this. I love doing that sort of stuff. I love when like a synth gets like jumpy. Not all synthesizers you use in FL Studio will have this sort of stuff, but if you create uh, like a sample, um, what are these called? They're called like uh, a channel rack sampler. You'll be able to edit stuff. You could also edit like the uh, A, SDR stuff right here. You could edit the LFO. You could edit the pitch. You could edit like it basically you could turn any sound into a synthesizer in FL Studio through the channel rack. And so using the same bass tone, I, I pitched it up and turned it into a lead. And then I also added some portamento to it, which is uh, this here, portamento mode and mono with a slide. If you click the right, you can select any of these steps. I think I selected one step. No. What step did I? I think I put it at six. You can see the portamento time in the corner up here where the uh, FLP is. You see portamento six, and that's what gives it like the zippy sound because I, I like really zippy synths. Um, and then let's see where the drums are. Here we go. The drums, the first drum. So all this is, is the fart samples attack and it's pitched down. And uh, when you do that, you just put in a, like a kick. And this is kind of like a weird marching kind of like Jersey house kind of vibe. It also matches the, the bass. And then here's like a, like a crescendo into the next part. So yeah, knowing that I pitched the attack of the fart, you're able to also, uh, see, where is it? Make snares out of it. So this is uh, the fart, just the attack. And it, it mimics the kick. Um, it's, it's on the two and four, but there are some parts that stand out like the, the fourth part. And then I, I made like this little riff right there so you could hear like a variation on the last part. Um, let's see, what else is there on this? Oh, the hi-hats. There's It's the attack, but like super pitched up. All I had to do was edit it in Edison and then using the pitch in there. Here, let me show you how it's done. So you open it up in Edison, you click this little toolbar, you go to uh, time stretch, pitch shift, and all I did was use the pitch course, put it all the way up. Uh, and then I use uh, E3 generic because I like the way that sounds. And I, you just press accept and it'll pitch it for you. And you could do it multiple times until you raise it all the way to the top. And what I got here was this really high hi-hat. So that's still the same uh, attack of the fart noise, but as a hi-hat. And um, I like to make sure like the off beat has a little bit more bounce than the first beat since the first beat already has kicks on it. So it gives it like this pumping on the eighth note. Um, Let's see what the next part is. So yeah, that's all of the all all that track is is all that. Um, if if you look at the the effects right here, I just use the fart with extra reverb. So I put it on six, and if you open up the six, we have um, 
a fruity delay with automation on it oh, let's see where the delay is here so you can see right here as it goes on the delay turns on until it's like reverberated out and then um one of the cool things oh let's go to the eq so as you can see the fart is super eq'd crazy like i wouldn't recommend stuff like this but since it was like an mp3 sample there was no high end so to create an artificial high end which kind of sounds robotic and uh, met metallic i just boosted this all the way up to plus 18 decibels so when you hear the fart let me uh let me show you see it creates a highness right here so this ranges between 3,000 and 10,000 so this would be around the this part right here also i lowered it in the 4,000 range because that's normally where it like a, a sharp sharpness would hurt your ears i also added a sidechain gross beat so that it actually pulses uh with when the song goes so this is an artificial side chain, so as it's moving with the beat, it'll pulse. So it's it, it's just more dancing that way. And then I have all I have limiters on everything. This one I have it really quiet because what I did in this mixing session is I mixed every all the instruments really quietly, and then I had the drums be the loudest part so that it creates like this pump when it goes to the master chain. So you can see right here. So you can see the kick is all the way up here at like negative 2.5, but like the bass is at here at negative 13, the lead is at negative 21, the crash is at negative almost 30, and um, when it goes to the master channel, finally it's um it's compressed all the way down to negative 15, with a out ceiling of negative 0.1 just so that it doesn't peak, and uh, when you put it all together, it has like a a, a really thick kind of dynamic range. So you can see the, the pumping in the track. So as it comes out the speakers, it's of course going to be like banging. Um, what, what, what else can I show you with this one? Oh, the lead has a, a little bit of delay on it. So I can show you the delay uh, soloed. Okay, here we go. I also added a little bit of reverb to give it some space. So if I turn these off, if I turn everything off, you'll hear how it originally sounded. It originally sounded like this. See, it sounds kind of like just jarring on the ears. So with the EQ, I cut off the low end and I created an automation clip on this part right here so that it could like... And like it could build dynamics with uh, the harmonies so it gets like louder and the sound shows up more in your ear. Um, so this also has a syntax right here on the mixer where you see my mouse dancing. So first it delays and then it goes out. Actually, normally I would go like this, like this. Then it goes to the reverb blast because reverb is like kind of like a space. So for this reverb, I, I have like a huge space. I just made sure my space is huge. Turn my uh, diffusion all the way up. I turn my speed all the way down, my mods all the way down, my bass all the way down, my damp all the way up, my cross all the way up. And then for the wet, I usually have it at 50. I have my separation all the way up because I really want, because it's, it's a really mono sound. So if you have the separation up, it just like widens in your headphones. Um, and then for the delay, I just po put some random delay. I think a 3.4 is like two bars on 138 beats per minute. Like the decay time is basically how long it takes for the, the reverb to go away. So I think this is, this is a kind of like a big delay so that, uh, is it yeah delay times big so that it kind of has like a like a tail and when you put it all together and yeah that's what gives it like this mystical magical sound let's see what other ones that i do cool stuff to um the rest is all pretty simple it's all just a uh, compressed uh not, not really compressed, but like there's a limiter keeping it from going too loud. Like if you listen to the kick. I make sure like the first kick's the loudest and then the rest of the kicks are kind of quieter. So it creates like more emphasis on the first hit. So like when it really hits the first kick, you feel it and then you groove with it. Um, let's see. So yeah, when you put it all together, you get a song that sounds like this. Oh, 
actually I want to show you some interesting things I did with this lead right here. So the lead, I, I don't like when songs get too repetitive, like you already know what's going to happen what's going to happen so you just switch it up and, and change a couple things here and there so on this one i knew that there's a portamento on it which means it gets slidey so on these off beats is it an off beat let's see yeah they're they're kind of like on the third beat um it, it would go down So yeah, that was on a separate uh, MIDI uh, MIDI pattern. Some synths in FL Studio will will allow you to do these kind of overdubs. Some synths don't allow you to do it though. So you have to kind of experiment to see which synths allow you to uh, use multiple MIDI tracks in one. And then also, if you see right here, there's this uh, automation clip, which is just the frequency from the EQ that I used. So you can see it builds up as time goes on. And it starts at 50% and then works its way up to 75%. Then when it drops, it hits 100. So there's like an extra air of boost. So it's like building up. Then it's almost there. I mean, there is like that, that burst of reverb. And then it's all the way. And then uh, what else is in this song that's interesting? Oh, I like this little kick fill right here. So for that part, what I do is over the entire master channel, I actually have this EQ that cuts off the bass because I felt like the bass was too strong in the overall mix. So what I do here is I created this high pass and this low pass to kind of give it like a low five vibe because sometimes the highs are a little bit too high. And if you put it around 10,000, it'll give like this like cassette vinyl kind of aesthetic. So I created this automation cliff that cuts out the the beginning bass so when the track starts there's not a lot of bass it's like maybe half the bass if you see right here and then as the track keeps going you'll see this little automation clip and it starts moving to increase the bass so that dynamic between uh quiet and loud is more prominent when you automate the bass tone like that um let's see what else and then yeah right here it kind of cuts away so if I get rid of this loud fart sound, you could hear the kick come in. It's like halfway. And for this part, this little kick feel, it's just the same kick, but an octave higher. Normally to be down here, but I had it up. And then uh, I think I also did some, uh, if you see right here where it says control and you can see these uh, parameters, you could click here and there's some, not channel pitch, it's a, uh, show fine pitch there we go um sometimes you have to see this this thing right here zoom value you have to move it down but basically i had it pitch from an octave and then goes back to normal so that's what gives it like that that little downward sort of thing and yeah that is my reverb fart track i made for the meme follow me on instagram follow me on twitter hit me up wow excellent job frank thanks everyone for tuning in and watching frank's workshop we appreciate you all. If interested in learning more about FL Studio or any of the programs at Electronic Music Collective, please contact admissions at electronicmusiccollective.com. Stay tuned for further updates on future workshops, and we look forward to seeing you in the future.